Hey, how's it going, everybody? My name is Aaron Hilliard. Welcome to another episode of Mushroom Wonderland. I'm your host here. I'm also vice president of the local mycological society in Kitsap County, Washington. I love to go out and forage wild mushrooms. And today I want to show you one of the most forageable, easy to identify beginner uh, wild mushrooms that you can go out and forage for yourself. They're actually growing on a tree right here in the background. And so I'm on the edge of this like beaver pond and areas like this are really common in North America and we have hardwood trees and uh, often these hardwood trees grow desirable mushrooms when they die. So come with me on this episode of Mushroom Wonderland to discover oyster mushrooms, how to identify them and what to do with them when you find them on this episode of Mushroom Wonderland. Let's go. Mushroom Wonderland. There's my boy Gunner. And we're here where this like beaver pond is. And these wetland systems are really common here in Western Washington, but I spotted this tree across the way. It's got these flushes of huge mushrooms growing on it. And uh, you see that? These are a desirable edible mushroom that's pretty easy to ID and to forage wild here. It's a little bit deep where he's standing, but I'm thinking I might be able to go around, uh, go across some logs and get into that forest over there and find my way to harvest those, uh, those oyster mushrooms. And I wanna show you what that looks like to, um, to find these in the wild. So we're gonna see if we can get across this beaver pond and get to those mushrooms. I have my tall muck boots on because when you're foraging in an area like this where it's a wetland, it's very swampy and wow, there you can see the tree right there with all of those mushrooms growing on it. So how in the heck are we going to get over there? It might be too deep even for my boots. Let's see. Not too bad. Wading through the swamp of reed grass and skunk cabbage. There we go. Look at these. Beautiful, huge oyster mushrooms. So if you notice, they have gills and that's these paper-like structures here. <laughs> and uh, so a lot of mushrooms have gills, but one of the first things we're gonna notice, this is growing on wood, on dead wood. This is an old tree that's dead. And uh, look at how huge some of these guys are. And so they always grow in a shelf-like type thing like this. Have those white gills. And then the gills, they run all the way down to the base. There is no like pronounced stem on these. Um, these ones are more kind of brown towards the out, outer edge or the margin. This is called the margin. And then lighter colored towards the wood. and. There's quite a few different like subspecies of these, but uh, these are easy to cultivate and obviously pretty easy to spot. You could just go to the edge of the wetland and find yourself, uh, you know, a tree by looking out <laughs> across the wetland. And so these mushrooms are also prone to fly larva um, in the form of worms. And you can see all these little gnats are kind of buzzing around, no doubt they're having a little bit to eat and they're laying some eggs in here this one's pretty old when the margin is like split like that it's because it's getting really old but man these are just letting a million spores off into the air pretty easy to harvest all you got to do really is just grab the mushroom and just pull it right off of the tree and uh, see this white powdery substance that is the spores and so basically mushroom seeds but right here there's like 10 million of them even though it just looks like a white powdery surface they're very uh they're very microscopic so it takes millions of them to see that kind of coloration so that was a big spore load so i have this mesh bag it works pretty good for collecting mushrooms they can breathe so they don't get all slimy you don't want to really collect in a plastic bag that you can't breathe in there and they'll definitely get slimy and mushy 
And these also allow for a lot of spores to still be dropping as I'm walking down the trail. So they serve a couple of nice functions. One way that you could harvest these mushrooms is with a knife. You could cut it right along the tree, you know, and then when I cut this open, man, I could see a lot of larval activity in here. A lot of worms, a lot of bugs. So I only want to go for the youngest of the young ones and leave behind some of these really big ones, but they easily just pull off the tree like that. And, um, you know, you can grab as many as you want, but I like to leave a few behind just for the progeny of the fungus, you know, so they can keep continuing to drop spores. And these big old wormy ones, to be honest, I'm not really interested in eating them, but some of these big ones are just, are just gorgeous. So you can also dry these and uh, rehydrate them for later use it's a pretty good way to to uh, preserve these mushrooms all right stoked to have my big old cluster of oyster mushrooms so there's a lot of different species worldwide there's tropical ones like the pink oyster pleurotus deja moore that one is tropical. These ones, temperate, obviously, growing here in one of the northern latitudes in Washington State. And so these are pretty hardy. I can find these in the winter, in the spring, summer, and fall. This is one of the few mushrooms that seems to be able to be found all year round. And they're also easy to cultivate. Pleurotus pulmonarius is probably the complex of mushrooms that these ones are in. Um, this one has been sequenced in this area and has came back as an undescribed species of Pleurotus. So they're calling it Pleurotus species PNW number seven. That is nerd talk for a delicious wild edible mushroom you can forage on the hardwood trees right now in the spring and really any time of year. Also easy to cultivate. I could just make a spore print of one of these, put those spores onto an agar dish that I bought from Amazon, which I'll put a link in the description for that. And you're well on your way to cultivating your own oyster mushrooms from a wild strain. That is so much fun. You'll learn so much about mushrooms if you start to cultivate them. You can learn how they grow, what they eat, how they fruit, um, and how they reproduce. And it's just super fascinating. Or you could just take these home, make a delicious oyster mushroom soup. You could uh, slice these up and saute them, put them on a steak, or replace any mushroom recipe with these delicious oyster mushrooms and impress your friends and family. Tell them you learned all about it here on Mushroom Wonderland. Make sure to hit subscribe. We'll see you on the next episode. Much love, everyone. Peace out.